The Toyota Corolla, the Toyota Camry, great cars, reliable, economical, but passionate? Well, in 2007, a Kia Toyota said, let's build something with passion. And here it is. It's freaking really sweet. The FRS. So, is it worthy of all the hype? Let's find out. I really like the arches over the wheel wells. Kind of looks reminiscent of modern infinities, or perhaps they were going for a baby Ferrari California look. The two-tone 17-inch alloys add to the aggressive look and only weigh 22 pounds. From the rear, you can see that aerodynamics played heavily into the design. It actually has a 0.27 coefficient of drag. That's better than the Nissan GTR and the Porsche Cayman. I think it's a winner from every angle. This one might be my favorite. Inside, the engineers took great care to keep its sports car simple. It's got everything you need and nothing you don't. The tachometer is prominent and the seats really hold you in with big bolsters on the side. Even the pedals look up to the task. I even like the faux carbon fiber on the dash. It's simple and sparse, but most importantly, it doesn't feel cheap. It's all about the business of going fast. The standard sound system sounds nice and offers 300 watts of power, while the optional bespoke system, which integrates into your iPhone, offers 340 watts. The rear seats are best left for cargo, but they can fit too in a pinch. They also have the latch connection for child seats. You'll actually be able to fit more than you think in here. The FRS was designed to fit four spare tires, a toolbox, and a helmet. Pretty impressive. So, as you can see, with the seats folded down, you get a lot of room. Powering the FRS is a 16-valve flat four with an aluminum block and heads. It also features port and fuel injection. It produces 200 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 151 pound-feet of torque at 6,600 RPMs. That's good for a 0 to 60 time of about 6.2 seconds and a top speed of 143 miles per hour. You actually get better fuel economy with the 6-speed automatic. You also get paddle shifters with the auto too. Expect 25 miles per gallon in the city and 34 on the highway with 28 overall. Opt for the manual transmission and you'll get 22 in the city and 31 on the highway with 25 miles per gallon expected overall. A manual transmission Scion FRS starts at 24,200. The automatic starts at 25,300. And then of course, can equip it any way you like it. It's a Scion, fully customizable, anything you like. So your final price, even for a fully, fully loaded car, just around around 30, a little over $30,000 if you want to do everything and go over the top with it. So it's affordable and that's very important in a sports car. The history of cars like the S2000, they took the inspiration from that one. The Toyota Corolla 86, as it's going to be known in Europe and a lot of the rest of the world. And really, they have brought the sport back to the car. This is a true sports car, and it's affordable. There's really nothing else on the road like it. Maybe the Mazda Miata, but with the Miata, you only get two seats. It doesn't feel real quick off the line to start, but if you keep the revs up, say over 4,000, it really comes to life, and the engine just snarls, and the power is definitely there. And of course, even more important is the handling. You can throw it into a turn and, you know, it feels faster than it is perhaps. You can get the car a little loose and have fun with it, but it's not outrageous with its power. And that's what helps to keep the price down. So to me, it really is the best of all worlds. It's affordable. It's certainly not slow. It's a very quick car, but it's not over the top and it doesn't sacrifice safety or anything else. Scion really wants you to feel connected also. Much like the Entune system for Toyota, they have the bespoke system. And basically it operates from a cloud. You can hook, right now you can hook your iPhone up to it. Uh, soon you'll be able to hook your Droid up to it as well. And basically, 
through the screen here, you'll be able to text your friends, tell them where you want to meet them, and then through the navigation system, get there. So it's a very tech savvy car. As a credit to its enthusiast designers, the FRS is also a nice touring car. I found it very comfortable on our hour plus long journey. It even has cruise control, which is the same as you'll find in other Toyota Scion cars. Noting the uh, FRS in front of us, you know, it really looks exotic, this car. Toyota Scion sought inspiration for the FRS from the S2000 and, of course, the Toyota Corolla 86. And the car will be known as the 86 throughout most of the world. But, you know, it's cars like that and the Z that really made a sports car affordable for Americans and it really caught on and there were just so many of them sold and people just loved them and this one I think is really going to have the same effect and if you take the Nissan Z well this one is actually an inch lower and half inch shorter so they drew some inspiration and it's actually a smaller and that means more chuckable car than the Z. Out on the track it handles just exactly as you'd expect it. That's thanks to the 5347 weight distribution. It has enough power to have fun, but not too much to get you into trouble. It handles exactly like you'd expect it to. You can also adjust the traction and vehicle stability control any way you like. You can even totally cancel it. It'll certainly understeer and oversteer, but it's very predictable. The Scion engineers did a great job with the FRS. It's truly amazing and a lot of fun to drive. I've spoken a lot about how certain cars have really a shape that's all their own. A 70s Corvette or perhaps the Jaguar E-Type or even the Porsche 911. And let me tell you, I think the FRS has the same sort of deal. I really like the way you have uh, two bulges over the wheels and it really gives it a distinct shape. Now, Scion says it's also to help you point the car on the track, but to me, looking out over these Nevada mountains, it uh, serves another purpose. It's very visually stimulating. So the question remains, did they pull off building a very passionate sports car? And the answer is definitely yes. You can see the passion, when you look at the car, it's a great shape. You can hear the passion when you match the throttle. And most importantly, you can feel the passion when you drive it. I'm driving Ivan Katz.